Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, the third generation Ford Escort. Welcome back. And Quarterlight, if you don't know, we're a very small channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from many different generations so if you think that might interest you please consider subscribing anyway back to today's brochure for the mark 3 ford escort the mark 3 escort came out in september 1980 ran till 1986 now well, like we say it came out in September 80 this brochure is actually from September 1980 so it's a good glimpse at what customers would have seen when this new car was launched because it was a dramatic change from the Mark II the Mark II really didn't change uh, much from the Mark I this was a, a, a drastic change to a front wheel drive Ford Escort so let's have a look at this now so here is the brochure itself showing a uh, top spec, you know, your gear Ford Escort for a generation has the tagline as it did when it was first launched simple is efficient. Well, it sounds a little bit of a strange tagline, and you know, why would you put that? But Ford was very conscious of you know your traditional loyal Ford Escort buyers uh, from the Mark 1, the Mark 2, but this was a drastic change wasn't it front wheel drive now a hatchback quite a dramatic change from the previous escorts so they was trying to be you know, simple is efficient we haven't we still got a, a a reliable simple vehicle you know is what they're trying to say here but looking back it does seem a very strange tagline but certainly ford were very conscious of those uh, loyal buyers but if we think about it, really, it was kind of like following um, the the Vauxhall Astra. It was mirroring what the Astra was doing. Um, if we look at the Astra from some of the same sort of period, yeah, that's gone to front wheel drive. That's gone to a hatchback. Well, kind of, hasn't it? It, it, it was actually also available as a saloon that looked like a hatchback but you know you know what i mean it's kind of like mirroring the same thing that Vauxhall was doing with the astra although we are kind of like getting sidetracked and we've got a lot to get through so let's stick to this ford escort at the bottom here uh stating the new ford escort because like i say the brochures dated october 80 when the car was launched we turn to the first pages you usually get this quite often in Ford brochures the anatomy of efficient car something like showing the key features showing it's you know, good fuel economy um, nice and streamlined and you know the uh, attractiveness of a hatchback you can carry things around with you now that leads us on to our first model proper and the here like i said this is a good brochure because it really gives you an idea of what trim levels were available at launch so here it is the the base model your base for an escort think escort popular the model before the l is how our range starts the escort as a whole was a very important car for ford and it was Pretty much a success from the start. 81, it won European Car of the Year. 82, it overtook the Cortina as the nation's best-selling car. And, you know, there were more escorts than anything by, you know, late 80s. Um, which is hard to believe now, isn't it? They really were like uh, street furniture. They were everywhere. But try and find a Mark III Escort today. They really have all but disappeared. But back to this base model, and the base model, I do like base models because they are a bit weird, really. Um, Ford at this time did a, 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 a thing where they had the honor, your high models and your low models here. So this would be your low series models here. Base and L would be the low series models. Your GL and above would be the high series models. They had kind of like a different 
dashboard which we'll have a look at um, so the base models had this like hard field dashboard which obviously a picture doesn't really show you too well the GL and above had like a soft feel dashboard so that's interesting but the base model had kind of like the lower end of this base dashboard and we'll have a look at that now and it's a little bit of a weird model this one and actually this base escort really didn't sell well because you know it really was very stripped down i mean even for its time it was extremely basic let's have a look at some of this text and i'll show you what i mean with some of these pictures so it starts by telling us this base model is available both as a, a three door and a five door from launch it had an 1100 or 1300 uh, carburetor with an automatic choke transmission at this time was a four speed um, we didn't really get our sort of five speed uh, across the range until around about 1982 so four speed at this stage early on of course big change was this uh, front suspension this independent macpherson strut with coil spring telescopic shock, shock absorbers a big change the suspension set up on the mark three rather than those sorts of archaic uh, leaf springs of the mark two so it was a big change steering brakes i'm not going to read it all because obviously the, the brochure would be too long uh, but needless to say it was a big change from the mark to escort and a change for the better i think in my opinion um although obviously rally fans would much prefer that rear wheel setup but by this stage that was a very antiquated design uh tells you a bit about the lighting i'll tell you a bit about the body you know what's what's there it doesn't really tell you what it hasn't got so i will just add that in later on but interesting this is your interior vinyl trim so the base model actually had a vinyl trimmed um seats the, the you could get fabric as an optional extra but you know super nasty vinyl trim seats on this base model and uh, you know the seats that feel horrendous on a hot day so from that it sounds like hey you've got quite a bit of equipment but there's a lot of things that it's missing which we'll talk about in a moment and it's also telling us that the car that's illustrated is a three door in diamond white and it's got blue fabric trim on this one the blue fabric trim shown here is an optional extra like i say vinyl trim was what you really got nice little image there of it driving through the streets looking very basic here are those very basic seats although like i say this is the optional extra with the fabric seat here is the dashboard dashboard was extremely basic on this model and we'll see how basic that is in a moment when we look at the l but basically the rest of the range had sort of like a center um, vents emitted on this model no center vents they also um, will look i think they had like a um, speedo uh, not speedo a um a speaker is what i'm trying to say a speaker in the middle like a one big speaker or also emitted on this base model if you have a look more at that dashboard doesn't even have a I'll probably see it better on the next page it doesn't even have a glove box it's just a, a shelf the rest of the range had like a a uh, glove box a closed glove box you can also see the blanking plates on there where your radio would be and like i say your speaker would be up here and you'd have sort of uh, vents on all the other models so it was really a very strange stripped down model as these often are if we go back up again if you look at these door cards the rest of the range had a full door card these base models had you know your metal at the top so a smaller door card but they also didn't have an armrest on the door either so that was all very strange really they tried to strip it down as much as they possibly can to get that sort of low starting price other things it doesn't show on these pictures no um you know 
parcel shelf on the back you know when you open the tailgate there wasn't actually a, a, a parcel shelf on there there was no tailgate release etc etc just a two two position uh, blower fan no side demisters you know think stripped down think basic it's no wonder it didn't really sell very well but looking back i always find these base models very interesting you can also identify these base models as they have these like black little caps in the center of the wheels i don't believe yeah if we look at this picture here no um rear view mirror or door mirror on the passenger side either on this super base model therefore unsurprisingly when we turn to the next page the escort l most people went for the l rather than that very stripped down model but it does make that basic uh, base model although i like to call them the popular um, it makes them quite a rare car um, but the l was certainly a much more sensible choice for not really that much more money than that stripped down version let's have a look at some of this text and we'll have a look uh, particularly at the dash how that's different and some of the extra features again available as a three or a five door engine choices this time you can have 1100 a 1300 and now a 1600 same thing carburetor automatic choke transmissions the same that four speed suspensions the same steering's the same brakes the same oh actually it's not the same as it as as the escort saloon but with ventilated front discs now and servo assistance on the 1600 uh, that's a look at the wheels and tires your light and electrics it says all the same but we've now got a heated rear window body as the escort saloon but with a tailgate push lock dual body tape stripe oh we've got a tape we've got a stripe down base model didn't have a stripe uh, bright trim on the windscreen uh back lights around black b pillar we'll have a look at that and additional sound installations and we've got an l badge uh, so we've got a little bit more sound installation so yeah the base model even had less sound insulation on it and that's a look at um, your extras on this model it says the same but then it's got a very long list of things extra than that base model we've now got reclining seats trimmed in sandford fabric improved rear seat contours color keyed ribbed carpet in passing car compartments fully trimmed doors and wheel arches front and rear armrests driver's lower parcel shelf glove box with lid tilting rear pack package tray dipping rear view mirror passenger vanity mirror on sun visor two speed wipers with intermittent wipe three speed heater fan two additional center face level vents with warm air facility front passenger grab handle two rear grab handles incorporating coat hooks two rear ashtrays a perforated headlining cigar lighter side window demist vents front door storage bins so it's a very long list of extra things you get on l which are all really things you kind of like would expect to be on a vehicle not only to there but even at that time you would expect these uh, to be on a car so like i say that base model was indeed extremely base you can also see we've now got these sort of like silver center caps on there and we've got two mirrors we've got another mirror there on the passenger side as well if we look down right at the very bottom here it does tell us what that is if i can find it with the camera so there we go so it's a escort l we're looking at the five door this time in terracotta with indian red trim um, when we look at these pictures we have to bear in mind the options fitted at extra costs are head restraints and forge push button radio if we go back to that dashboard though we can really see all those changes on the l we've got this speaker in the center and there are the uh, center vents i was talking about earlier which were omitted 
on the base model. This is still classed as the lower uh, dash um, model. The base and the L have got the lower, so it's still like a hard feel dash, but it is at least got those basic features and you can see that glove box on there and there's your optional uh, radio on this particular model. And we've also stepped up to at least a three speed fan now. If we look down, we can get sort of a look, our first real proper look at the five door model, a very practical car all round and you can see it's all these easier stripes it's not a rubbing strip it's just a stripe on this model we also get a look at how practical um a hatchback is over and what you know escorts buyers had previously a, a boot much more practical as this hatchback and of course in the uk hatchbacks were really becoming very popular still quite a high sill i think at this time and there we go having a look at those much nicer seats and we also can see how um, the door cards go right to the top on the L model and also your little armrest which the base model didn't have another little bit of a look at those much nicer seats look particularly nice in this colour I think like showing head restraints and like I said they are optional extras and a little picture of this particular model in a nice little scene. Overall, it looks a much better car, doesn't it? Just zoomed in so I can show you a couple of those other features above that base model. We've now got a nice little bright surround around that front windscreen. And you can also see this black tape on this B pillar, which the base model didn't have, given it an overall a little bit of a nicer overall look I think. We then move up to our Escort GL um, and these is now your high trim level cars, your GL and your gear so we're now moved up into luxury. Um, lovely in this blue I think, the very common colour actually for these Escorts was this uh, blue colour well again look at some of these features and we'll look at some of these extra little bits of details on this luxurious gl okay your gl picture shows again you can get as a three door or a five door uh, engines this time no 1100 we can just get as a 1300 or a 1600 same transmission though um suspension is the same we've got a forward st uh, stabilizer bar which the base model didn't have surprisingly steering is the same brakes as the escort we've got them ventilated from this and servo assistance on the 1600 little look at the uh, wheels a little bit of look at the lighting and electrical and the body gives you an idea so it has the escort saloon but with body sound side protective molding so we don't just have a stripe this time on like the l we've got an actual body molding on the tailgate push lock bright windscreen back lights around protective bumper inserts we'll have a look at those bright side window surrounds and belt line moldings black b pillars additional sound insulation and a gl bite so doesn't sound like there's a great deal more than the L because it's like referring back to saying that it's got extra on the, than the base model. Interior, here's a little bit of a equipment on there. Um, let's have a look, see if we can pick something out. Obviously, you can pause this screen if you want to read the whole thing, but let's maybe just pick something out. Okay, so like three quarters of the way down there it starts talking about this soft feel two-tone instrument panel so soft feel dash now we're in the higher spec models that's how it differs from those base models uh, we've also got things like a coin box center console we've now got the Ford P21 push button radio as standard on there as well 
We've also got some sort of interesting features on there. We've got now we've got a quartz clock, special gear shift gator, a knob, color keyed ribbed carpet, driver's lower parcel shelf, tilting rear package tray, and a four spoke soft speed feel steering wheel. So we have got a different steering wheel on there as well. So the model we're looking at, like I said, it's the Escort GL5 door, this time in Arctic blue with blue trim. Options fitted at extra cost, tailgate wash wipe. So that's surprising, isn't it? Uh, at launch, tailgate wash wipe was even an option on the GL. You know, think of hatchbacks, they need that tailgate wash wipe, surely. It is saying at extra cost, the passenger door mirror is an optional extra. So looking back to the L, that passenger door mirror would have been an optional extra as well. Again, you know, it's not actually that surprising. A lot of cars at this time did just have that driver's door mirror. Uh, head restraints are an optional extra. Tilting sliding sunroof, optional extra. Metallic paint, optional extra. So when the Escort was launched, they weren't really giving many things away for free and you know that's what Ford did wasn't it they started off not giving you very much at launch because wow new car people want a new car this new shape when it gets a bit older they start throwing those little bits of equipment in for free and you can see this model has got the sunroof optional extra uh, we look at those nice blue seats and your parcel shelf, which you kind of like would expect on a hatchback, but like I say, you had to move up the range to get one. There's your sunroof, and our first glimpse of that steering wheel. Now, it did say in the text, I'm sure it had a quartz clock, although we can certainly see it's just a uh, standard clock in place of the rev counter at this time. And at the bottom, we get a nice sort of side view and give, give us a good look at this uh, rubbing strip going down there and all your extra sort of bright work around the windows to donate. You've gone into more luxury car uh, status. And have a look at that GL model. And then finally, a glimpse on those seats then we get the car you aspire to have your escort gear we are in top of the range luxury now so let's look at some of those features we've now got so again very similar sort of features we got the 1300 and the 1600 transmissions the same like I said we're still using that four speed box on these early escorts. Similar idea for suspension, steering, brakes, very similar to what we've just seen. Um, there's a look at the wheels and tires and the lighting and electrical. Of course, you can pause this screen if you wanna read it all. Now we get to the all important body. So what extra things has this got on it? Well, we've got now we've got um, bumper insert overriders, so we'll have a look at that for sure. Uh, bright mouldings on windscreen and you know, rear mirror, which the lights are put on the higher spec models on there. We have now got a tilting sliding screen glass sunroof with a louvered screen. We can now have that for no additional cost. A triple body side tape stripe. How fancy. Body coloured fuel filler cap. Um, nice. Bright mouldings on hood top and tailgate. Bright side window surrounds. Bright tail lamp surrounds. So all those little, I always say all those little chrome extras, but you know, not really chrome. It's just bright surrounds, of course. Driver and passenger remote door mirrors. Additional sound insulation and the most important thing when you have a gear, the gear badge. Interior wise, 
a long list of extra things above that very very base escort i wish really on these it just told you what it had extra to your gl but certainly pause that screen you can have a look at all that for yourself if we so this particular model has got um it's the escort gear of course five door strator silver with shark grey trim optionals fitted at extra cost still at tailgate wash wipes or optional extra on all the models which is surprising isn't it tinted glass is an optional extra surprising for a gear model rear inertia real seat belt so it's showing this model with the optional extra rear seat belts headlamp wash optional extra but it is featured on this particular one so that's interesting and electrically operated front windows just the front optional extra still on your gear metallic paint so like i say at launch ford was very stingy weren't they they knew later on when this uh, became an older model we could start throwing these things in but at this time if you wanted this new shape model you had to pay for all the extras interesting though you can see a little bit of a uh, fake wood the interior does look very nice though i do like the seats on the gear they look far nicer and even the door cards look a lot nicer and a little bit of a look at the rear as well and you can see those optional extra rear seats look at the rear there and all the uh, sort of extra little bit of bright work even the extra bright work even around the lights and we've got these little overriders on the bumpers there as well as well as that color coordinated uh fuel cap no flap just an open cap but at least it's um color coordinated and now we've got these nice um sunroof on this as well we can also see it's got tinted glass but like i say that that is surprisingly an optional extra and there we go another look showing that sort of uh, um, these rubbing strips but also this triple stripe which is quite unusual on there and we've even got these i won't say the wheel trims but sort of like these center wheel caps and these like wheel embellishers to make it look a little bit nicer for sure and then I've just kind of like zoomed in at the front there, really just to show you that extra bright work around the front as well, well around the indicators and the top, as well as you can probably just about make out that this has got like headlamp wash, which you know, unusual in 1980. But we do have one more model, and it's surprising, isn't it? I can't like forget the XR3 was or it did appear at the launch of the mark 3 escort which is surprising but very clever very forward thinking to throw this in right at the start because what a striking car it was certainly my favorite of the range at launch it's not the injection it's just an xr3 it's a carburetor model doesn't even have a five speed box but very forward thinking still had all the usual xr3 cues and it looked to me, it looked way better than any other Mark III Escort. Look at a lot of seats for a start. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the text and then we'll look at this uh, beautiful car in a bit more detail. So uh, there we go, the XR3, obviously only available as a three door. It's got a 1600, but like I said, it's not the injection model, it is just the carburetor, so it's the XR3, not an XR3i, of course. Still the four speed transmission that didn't come till later on um suspension slightly different by the looks of it so it's got that uh pressurized blitz gas shock absorbers all round plus progressive rate coil springs at the rear uprated front stabilizer bar so we have got a bit of a change there brakes front ventilated discs rear self-adjusting drums so surprisingly we still got drums at the back but nevertheless i'm sure it more than could be handled that little 1600 engine so we've now got um alloy wheels which is surprising it's so a deep sculptured cast alloy wheels with ultra low profile tires 
because we think about later uh, uh, XR3s and XR2s the, the, the alloy wheels was an optional extra here at launch standard surprising no uh, lighting and electrical a little bit of some of the information though which of course you can pause the screen if you want to read all those little bits of things but most importantly dual tone horn body some of the extra bits of the body mainly all the sort of like extra embellishments and you know little bits of black parts which we'll certainly have a look at in a moment interesting though tailgate wash wipe optional extra on the gear but you know let's throw it in on the xr3 unusual isn't it you know this is why i like car brushes because it reminds you of how strange sometimes these little bits of things are there's the interior all the little extras and bits and pieces on your interior kind of like think this is the top of the range model not only because it's your sporty model but you know it's got extras that even the gear didn't have surprisingly really isn't it anyway let's have a look down to say exactly what it's going to show us so the car illustrated the xr3 yeah we know um this is in sunburst red with laser trim options fitted extra cost here are tinted glass or so tinted glass still an option head restraint pads headlamp wash wipe push button stereo radio stereo cassette so a fancy little bit of information there it says however not available for delivery until november the 14th 1980 so i guess it was probably it was a, a vehicle that was shown at launch but like, like you can say you can it was just available slightly after launch so november the 14th 80 you could actually uh, get this one delivered but i think it was worth the wait wasn't it although no doubt a lot more expensive than the other models now let's have a little look at the interior we've got that nice rev counter now nice sporty steering wheel quite like this steering wheel looks quite nice overall doesn't it interior is where it's at though i do like that red striped interior looks quite nice and at the bottom it gives us lots of little images of all these little extra bits and pieces you've got this little uh, cassette uh, deck type storing thing very 80s that isn't it as well as this uh, quartz clock at the top there with that light and these iconic alloy wheels and just to remind you saying this is standard alloy wheels was not standard later on but at launch you could have those wheels as standard how lovely and of course you can see all those little extras and little black treatments always the same with ford black everywhere either means it's a super basic model or it's a sporty model chrome on them means it's a high specs uh, gear or a gl does look my favorite looking car of the escort range at this time though. and another little bit of an image kind of almost like a picture you would stick on your bedroom wall as a kid it does show the optional extra headlamp wash on there though again color quoted uh, uh fuel filler cap all black and i think it does suit being in red doesn't it that sporty looking little number also at launch we could get the escort estate cars although interestingly at launch it was only available as a three door you couldn't get the five door model at launch you could have it as that super basic escort estates you know your popular i still call it the popular uh, not even an l we can get also have it as an l or a gl so no gear in a state and like i said just a three-door model but let's have a look at that now not going to spend too long going through the specs because they're pretty much the same as the hatch you know your base model is available as the 1100 or 1300 Here's a bit of a look at your wheels and tyres, light and electrical, and body. There you go. Of course you can actually uh, 
Oops, if I can actually get it right. You can actually uh, pause the screen if you do want to read it all, of course. And look at that interior. Then you've got your L model. You can have that as your 1600. If you so desire. Like I said, I'm not spending too long because it really does mirror the hatchback in so many ways. Further information on the L, wheels, tyres, light and electrical body. And interior. And then your GL model. Only available as a 1300 or a 1600, you couldn't get your 1100 as a GL. Like I said, mirroring what the hatchback was. And then your body. And the interior. Interesting, isn't it? It says, as the GL saloon, but with ribbed carpet, environment colour for load compartments. That's a little bit strange, isn't it? But anyway, if you do want to read it all, of course, pause the screen. And at the bottom there, it tells us which model we're going to be looking at. Uh, car is illustrated is the L version in cobalt blue with blue fabric trim. Optional fitted extra at cost, head restraints, for push button radio. And again, a similar sort of clause. Yeah, it was shown at launch, but not available for delivery until November the 25th, 1980, if you wanted the estate model. But showing how practical that car is. Not a split fold rear seat, surprisingly, it just the whole thing folds back, but you can see a much lower lip for loading um, all your equipment, in this case a toy boat for going to the beach, no doubt. But as you can see, very sort of similar uh, as your L hatch. Just with a larger um, place to put your 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 equipment again surprising isn't it no rear rear wash wipe on the estate a little bit of a nice family pick and a view i always thought the estates of many of the generations of an escort were interesting because such a long rear window isn't it And a little bit of a family picnic scene continues. Okay, so the back page, it shows the different engines, a few of the specifications it didn't show you at the inside the brochure, fuel consumption figures for saloons and estates, and the weights. So if you do want to read that, by all means, pause the screen. We've also got the um, dimensions. And this unusual little caption, front seat belts are fitted to all models at no extra cost. Kind of surprising with Ford at this stage. And then finally the date, September 1980. So there we go, we better wrap it up there, that's gone a bit longer than I anticipated, but the Mark III Escort, certainly very interesting at launch, isn't it? If you've got any memories of the Mark III Escort, please do jot it in the comments. But for now, we'll say please do like and subscribe and uh, do take care. We'll see you very soon. Goodbye.